Use code Mr. No Ship Cost at IronsideComputers.com for free shipping with any purchase. Now, let's get into today's video. What is going on, you guys? It is Mr. No Sleep here from Old School RuneScape, and welcome to a brand new video for you all today. Today, I bring you Loot from 10 Hours of Money Making Methods Wilderness Edition. Today, I'll be doing 10 different things for one hour each, all in the wilderness. Starting at Revenant Dragons, and then moving on to Arteo, Calvarion, Spindle, and then Lava Dragons. Then switching it up to Runecrafting Death Runes, Catching Black Chins, and Fishing Dark Crabs. Then ending with charging glories and mining rune rocks. A lot of variety and it should be a lot of fun. So first up we have the Revenant Dragons. And something you need to know about this specific monster in this location is that it's a very big PKing hotspot. Just as I'm starting to do this trip I actually got attacked. So you're always going to want to bring some mage gear so that you can freeze your enemy and then log out and make them feel bad. Now other than the magic gear that you should bring in order to protect yourself, you're also going to want to bring a range setup for the dragon. So here we are starting the hour. We have a basic range setup, just black dehyde with an amulet of avarice, which will note all of my drops and increase my odds on rares. And other than that risk, I'm just having a web weaver bow. And with all these super restores, there's no way I should get smited. And it is important to note that while you're killing these dragons, you're also going to be getting some unnoted supplies such as food and restores. And this will make it so that you can always extend your trip. Here's our first looting bag, 871k. That is incredible. I would definitely advise anyone to bank their looting bag once they reach around 500k but depending on what drops you get that can happen very quickly using the seed pod teleport is a great way to bank quickly and then just go to your house to restore your stats and if you have your poh set up where you have an obelisk you can teleport to 35 wilderness and just run north this or you can just use revenant teleports and that'll cut down on the time 936k from our second looting bag still avoiding pkers but as you can see you can't avoid them forever but with this magic setup you can always make sure the second you get unfrozen try your very best to catch a freeze on your opponent and you can definitely log out especially with all of these walls and rocks in this area it's really easy to trap your opponent another benefit of killing any type of revenant in the rev cave is that the occasional boss will spawn once an hour in every world so i happen to get the kill here i won't be including this in the price check but this is just additional profit no matter what revenant you are killing and it's an easy 500k at minimum every time you get the kill but again it's a very big pking hot spot and you will have some competition with other pvmers but on the off chance that you don't get the kill you might get the surge which will increase your dps as you can see with that lovely blue skull above my head i think this changes my max hit from a 43 to a 56 or something crazy like that so this will definitely increase your uh, profit per hour with more kills an hour i wouldn't say this method is for everyone in the wilderness i know the wilderness is meant to be dangerous everywhere but the revenant dragon uh, you definitely go up against some of the best pkers and even some scary very AHKers too, so be very careful here. But overall, our first hour has been completed. Pretty surprised that I actually didn't die, but uh, as you can see, towards the very, very end, even when banking, there was a PKer chasing me. So overall, loot from one hour of Revenant Dragon Skull with no statue drops, 3.3 mil, and that's just in normal drops. If we were to add on the 500k that we got from the boss, that brings our profit up to almost 4 mil an hour. Now it is dangerous, but still very good money. Now keep in mind, if you don't like the dragon, you can always go to the Revenant Knight or the Revenant Orc and Dark Beast. So there are multiple Revenants that you can check out, but I decided to kill the dragon and I was happy with the results. Now we move on to the first of the Wilderness Boss edition of this video, and that would be Arteo. Now all of these bosses that I'm about to feature, if you're able to get the Void Waker drop on drop rate or even before it, you could potentially be averaging 4 mil an hour no matter what. But let's be realistic, not everyone is going to get that kind of luck. So just in normal drops let's see how much profit we can make an hour here and if we're lucky enough let's get a void waker drop let's get a dragon pickaxe i mean there's multiple rares from these bosses that are over a mil that can really increase your profit per hour but since we're just doing an hour of each the odds of me receiving anything rare is very unlikely but you never know i'm still missing all of these pets so you know you might get some luck even if it's not tradable and keep in mind as well you're going to be getting a lot of elite clue scrolls if you're a big fan of doing masters so that's always something something to motivate you to keep on killing these bosses, if not the profit. I wasn't really too afraid of PKers at Arteo since it is in level 21 wilderness. You can teleport right away, and that was what I was doing if anyone was to show up. I think 
overall, I only encountered one PKer, which I teleported from, and I found worlds very quickly because it was late night hours, otherwise it would be a little bit crowded. So that is one downside, it just takes a little bit to find a world, but with the web weaver bow set up as well as a nice tankier layout and ice barrage, you can stay here for pretty long lengths of time. Overall, in this hour, I did kill RTO 43 times, so that's not too bad, making around 1.1 mil in profit. So that's not too bad, and that's with no rares. The Void Waker drop increases this hourly rate by a lot, but with no rares, we're looking at 1.1 mil an hour, probably about 4 mil an hour eventually if you do get the rare. A great alternative to Callisto and a lot safer with still decent profit. And that's our TO. Now we're going to move on to Calvarion, my personal favorite wilderness demi boss. Using the air sign chain mace, you can get these kills so quickly, and you can always one hit the dogs that spawn on you. So, yeah, you just have to bring a salve amulet, a decent melee setup, decent supplies. And if you're really paying attention, you should never take damage here. It's just a lot of running around, so make sure to bring staminas. PKers are very easy to avoid. Just try and time your log out with uh, running back in the room while they're exiting the room. That's really the only advice I have for that. If you do get caught frozen in the middle of the room, it could be a little challenging, but for the most part, if you have a lot of supplies and or an alt account scouting for you, then you should be good to go on the PKer side of things. Love getting these six noted Sandfew Serum drops 170k each time, as well as the occasional Ancient Staff and Magic Seed. The drop table here is incredible, and that's why I love this boss. I personally think the drop table is better than all of the other Demi bosses, uh, and that's just, you know, with no rares, you can just still make really good profit on the normal drops. You get so many restores, so you can extend your trips here. And I would consider this a pretty safe location, and if you're a fan of anti-PKing, it is a great anti-PKing location. Using the tactics and all of the factors of the fight and the room, you can use that to your advantage and kill your opponent with Calvarion helping you out. But no anti-PKing, uh, at least not till later on in the video. So one hour of Calvarion has been completed, 42 kills in that one hour, and just in normal drops we hit 2 million GP profit. That's not bad at all, and if we were to get rares included uh, while camping this boss, that profit would probably go up to 3.7 mil an hour. Of course, that's expecting the Void Waker Blade. Now, if you don't have the Earth Sign Chain Mace, don't worry about it. You can use many different weapons on Calvarion that are effective, so keep that in mind. Now we move on to Spindle. Pretty much using the same exact setup that we were using at Calvarion. The only difference with this is no Salve Amulet, and you do have to bring any type of darts in order to kill the miniature spiders that do spawn occasionally. For the most part, Spindle is a great location for avoiding PKers compared to Venonatus because it is in 1v1 wilderness. You can't get attacked by a team here. And you have such good sight of the whole room that as soon as a PKer drops down, you can simply teleport out or decide to anti-PK them. But I actually didn't run into any PKers during this hour. One thing I love about Spindle is the 35 Onyx Bolt Tip drops and the fact that you occasionally get a strange fruit with every kill. So that'll help restore your run energy and you don't have to bring as many staminas because of that. So that's very nice. I essentially don't take much damage here at all, and that really goes for most wilderness bosses. I'd say the most aggressive one would be Arteo if you can't catch a freeze on him. But Spindle is very similar to Calvarion in the fact that you really won't be using much supplies here at all. The only thing you'll be using is a lot of ether because of the wilderness weapons uh, if you have access to them. Another great drop other than the Onyx would be those red spider eggs, and of course the dragon pickaxe, which you can expect pretty commonly from all these wilderness bosses, and I was surprised that I didn't get one from the other two, but we did finally break that streak, and this looting bag transformed into 2.2 mil because of that. So as we close out the hour here, this one should look more profitable than the others, just simply because of that dragon pickaxe drop, and keep in mind, if you're going to be grinding out these bosses for quite a long time, the rare drops are going to have a huge factor in with the overall price check hourly. But loot from one hour of killing Spindle with that 1.6 mil pickaxe included comes out to be 3.1 mil, and had we not received that pickaxe, it would have been more along the lines of about 1.5 mil, so something to keep in mind. Still decent profit and decent supply drops for Iron Man accounts as well. Now we move on to Lava Dragons, my personal favorite of this video. I love Lava Dragons mainly because of the Elite Clue Scroll drops here, and this was my first ever time using the Scepter, which I did have the Skull of Vedion attached to it, and uh, I was very, very very impressed with the power of this thing. I think when I use the crossbow with max range here, I would average about 60 to maybe 65 kills an hour, but using this scepter, I actually got 99 kills in 60 minutes here. And 
And the scepter was so powerful that it gave me the confidence to go ahead and try to kill this level 91 who was standing here for a little too long. And I ended up three hitting him. So if that's not proof of the power of this thing, I don't know what is. Now, I won't be including the five loot keys that this guy did give me uh, in this overall price check from the hour at Lava Dragons. But that's just uh, proof that you can definitely anti-PK here. Having all these supplies and having a nice mage setup, it doesn't really take much to bring a crossbow and a long Alongside that a nice special attack weapon so something to keep in mind and if you don't intend on anti-pking you can definitely just have extra best in slot mage gear and protect it upon death to increase your dps well we're going to pause the timer at 19 minutes in because we did receive our first elite clue scroll because of that lovely ring of wealth imbued increasing my odds uh by 2x so that's amazing we're going to go ahead and do that elite clue real quick and we'll open up the casket at the end of the hour so let's go ahead and get back to lavas here lovely 12 onyx bolt tip drop guaranteed 100k every time with wilderness elite diaries you can actually note these lava dragon bones otherwise you can just gather them in your looting bag there is still a ton of bot farms here so you will occasionally run into these guys with no armor and 99 magic and 99 defense because they cast long range with their trident so if you want to kill them you can actually make more profit an hour but uh you do run the risk of being scold so something to keep in mind now i will say that the lava dragon bone is only 2.9k the black dragon hide is 2.6 6k lava dragon bones have gone down significantly due to the fact that there are bots here in every single world who have had over 20,000 lava dragon kills based on the xp they have on the high scores i've seen bots here with 80 magic with a trident and i've also seen bots here with 105 magic with a trident so just do the math on how many lava dragons you have to kill in order to get to 99 mage from level 80 that is why lava dragon bones are worth essentially half of what they used to be jagex you fail on on all levels when it comes to banning bots and I am so disappointed. With all that being said though, the Lava Dragon Hour has been completed with 99 kills, the most I've ever killed in one single hour, so obviously I'm going to be recommending the Scepter for best in slot at Lava Dragons. Now it looks like it took 2,000 Ether, so we're going to go ahead and deduct that from the overall profit, and if we look at the current price of Ether, it's looking like 170, so 340k was spent on this one hour. Let's see how much profit we end up with now. 99 bones and 99 hides decent amount of alcables and lovely amount of onyx bolt tips so about 1.5 mil an hour about 1.2 mil profit due to the cost of ether but that 270k elite clue almost takes care of supply costs so i'll say about 1.5 mil an hour with this setup at lava dragons now we're going to be moving on to a skilling wilderness activity featuring one hour of the abyss rune crafting death runes let's see how much profit we can make even though death runes have gone down so much because of guardians of the rift and just a side note i didn't really mean to bash jagex about the lava dragon bot situation it's just that I've been spending a lot of time at Clan Wars lately, and if you right-click look up all of the bots that are killing Corporal Beast as well as Zolra, I promise you if you spend an hour just doing that, you will be infuriated to see the amount of kill counts bots have and that they get away with. So yeah, I'm thinking about making a video on that soon. We'll see though. 1.1 mil an hour runecrafting death runes, 12,200 runecrafted. Not much to say about runecrafting. There wasn't much to uh, show there. Now we move on from runecrafting death runes in the wilderness to hunting black chin champas in the wilderness from rune crafting to hunter here's my setup we're going to be laying six traps and we have mage gear just in case pkers show up in order to freeze them and then use the trees to your advantage and log out from them as long as you pick up your box traps before you freeze them you shouldn't really lose too much time uh, in the process of you know an hour to hour thing while hunting they're just going to interrupt you for maybe less than a minute so once you get away from the pkers you simply just keep on hunting i didn't uh feel the need to bank because if you do know what you're doing you're probably never going to die here it's very hard to die here unless you get claw rushed in your afk overall in one hour's time i did manage to hunt 439 black chins and i made 1.5 mil it's amazing to still see the price of these at 3.5k each because there's a serious bot problem here too but i've already you know ranted enough about the bot so i'll leave them alone for this part but anyway let's move on to a more relaxing method fishing dark crabs you're never going to become a billionaire by fishing dark crabs unless you somehow 
stumble upon a pot of gold here. I don't know, but uh, either way, it's very laid back. This is something you can do on a side account and just have minimal attention paid in case someone does show up to try to kill you. But the odds of someone PKing here is very low, especially if you try out a random world. And unlike other people who fish dark crabs, I actually bring gear and food so that I don't get killed. I don't understand the concept of just using uh, no armor here and having nothing with you because that would make you a very easy victim. So uh, make sure to bring a lockpick just in case you need it for the axe hut. Other than that, same uh, story with the whole gear setup. Just freeze your opponent and log out. But uh, yeah, I've managed to fish about 342 dark crabs with 99 fishing and all the diaries complete. So I did end up with about 316k. It's not bad if you do that, you know, 10 hours a day on the side, 3 mil a day. But overall, not the best money making method. Just something I figured I'd show for those who appreciate AFK activities. All right, now we're going to be doing one hour of recharging glories. Now, some Something to keep in mind, the Eternal is 60 mil, it's 1 in 25k, and you can uh, do about 1700 glories an hour if you're fast. The price of an uncharged glory currently sits at 12.1k, and the price of a charged glory amulet of 6 goes for about 13k, so I thought I was going to be making, regardless, 900 GP per glory that I charged. However, this was not the case, and to make matters worse, this is actually an activity where I don't gear up and I don't bring food, so for you dark crab fishers out out there. Sorry, I was making fun of you, but I died, so karma. People want to kill glory chargers so bad that even if they're doing a master clue, they're going to skull up on you, so where's my 10 hours of skulling master clue scrollers while pretending to charge amulets of glory. That's like a Torvesta idea right there. But anyway, that uh, that did not work because, you know, I froze my opponent and I logged out. We're at the found rune after all. These runes are for free to use. But either way, uh, yeah, I was expecting 900 GP profit per glory. I ended up making like 20 GP profit per glory because no one buys amulet of glory sixes for some reason. So really the only way you're going to make money while doing this is, is if you hit that eternal glory. And honestly, if you do 1700 glories an hour, you should should hit the eternal glory within about i don't know 14 or 15 hours and that translates to about four mil profit an hour if you look at it that way so no money being made on this one uh all profit is with the eternal but still a very notable money making method in the wilderness and still one of the best money making methods in the game if you get lucky well now we move on to our final activity of the wilderness today and that is going to be one hour of mining runite rocks now this is a setup that i'm going to be using to kill anyone that is also mining runite night rocks. I won't be including the loot in the price check, but it is important to note that you can kill anyone here because most of the time they're bots or they're just low levels or med levels that really don't bring too much food with them. So that's why I would always have just a couple spaces free to put the runite ore in my looting bag. And then the rest of my inventory would be a PKing setup with um, a crystal bow. I really don't know why I brought a crystal bow here. I just couldn't uh, be bothered to risk any more than I already was. But I did run into a low level who was, you know, mainly killing people who were mining runite ore because they don't fight back and yeah i guess all he needs is a dragon dagger to get the job done and remember that guy that i killed at lava dragons well there he is again yeah i could have killed him here but i actually felt bad when he called hi youtube me out yeah he's afk the first time i figure we'll let him away the second time and that is our third inventory banked of runite ore anyway so uh here we are killing a guy who is mining some rune ore he actually hit the entangle which is pretty impressive with uh with uh the setup he had and now we have dumb and dumber coming along with uh, the DDS with the full mage gear set up, Tome of Fire. He even has a Mage Arena 2 cape, but uh, due to the effects of my crystal bow here with all the damage, I mean, look at these constant 30s. 30, 30 for the KO. He now doesn't have a Mage Arena 2 cape anymore. So we're going to move on to his friend here. He uh, almost got me with that AGS spec, and I, to be fair, almost got him with this claw spec, but I could not get the job done. And can you believe it? Not only did a sandwich lady interrupt, but uh, he got away. Uh, Fading me and the sandwich lady. Well, fighting those guys took away the last three minutes of the hour, but that's okay. I think I made more from PKing them than I did from actually mining runite ore, but let's find out. One hour of mining rune ore, one mil and 40k. Not bad, one mil GP an hour plus easy PKs. Who wouldn't love uh, mining here and anti-PKing here at the same time? Just in all the keys, we got 268k from the first one, another 1.3 mil from the second one, and from the last one, 25 
Ring of Wealth's 350k. Well, that was 10 money-making methods in the wilderness. I hope you guys enjoyed. Overall, from the PVMing side of things, as well as all the loot chests, I made about 14.5 mil, and then from the skilling side of things, I would say I made another 3 to 4 mil. So, looking at the rune light tab here, just to show all of the profit made from each and every individual boss and monster that I killed, really goes to show that the wilderness has a lot of potential. Although it is dangerous, you can still make a lot of great money here, doing a lot of variety of things, uh, killing all sorts of different monsters, and doing all sorts of different activities. Well, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to click the like button, and if you have any suggestions on what you want to see done on the channel, feel free to comment below. A huge thank you to Angel's Blood, XXotic X, Deception Z, and Matthew Stivers for the monthly support. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. No Sleep, out.